Hey guys, my name is Gloria. I am an incoming Phillips Academy and we're freshmen. Um, and I applied the winter of 2019, which means I got my results back March of 2020. So this is my first ever YouTube video. Um, I hope this goes well, but I want this channel to kind of be informative and tell you guys what it really is like at boarding school. So we're gonna start off with applications. Um, a little bit about myself, I applied to 10 schools. So Exeter, Andover, Groton, Milton, Concord, NMH, BBNN, sorry, Deerfield, Middlesex, and St. Mark's. Um, I was accepted into five and waitlisted into the other five. Um, and if any of you guys want to know my stats or why I chose to attend Andover at the end or what it really is like right now as I've committed to Andover, but I haven't started the year yet, um, Definitely leave those in the comment sections down below so that I have an idea as to what to film next time. So let's get on with the video. Okay, so I divided this video into uh, sections and we're going to st start off with the first slide, the whole package. So these first seven things are going to be mandatory, while the eighth financial aid application, you apply for it separately and it's optional. So, number one, standardized test score, SSAT or IACE. If you're familiar with the SAT or the ACT, this is basically a mini version of them. You go to a different location, or maybe if it's in your city, you can go to that location. But for me, I have to go to a different city. You have to take them in person. I'm not sure about COVID regulations this year. These are used just as the primary academic standard for you because every school has different grades and every school has different classes difficulty so they can't really base your application on that essays um for me this was definitely the most important part of it all because i think they really define who you are most schools will give you about five essay prompts to write about and you get to choose either one, two, or three. Um, depending on the common platform that you're using, you might have to write separate essays for each school or in some cases write one for every single school and that's it. So number three, recommendation letters. Um, pretty self-explanatory. Most schools will require at least three or four recommendation letters. Most of the time they will be English, math, foreign language teacher, and counselor or principal. So in some cases you might also be required to have a science teacher rec or music extracurriculars like sports. Sometimes you might need a personal rec and these are just recs that are written by teachers but not from the perspective of a teacher. Number four, personal profile. This is probably the easiest part of the whole application because they are the most basic information of you. So for example, which grade you're in, what school you're attending right now, which grade you're going to apply it for, your clubs, extracurriculars, activities. So I would say definitely fill this out first because it's better to just have something done and over with. Number five, official transcript. Um, these are just your grades, your report cards. You will need to contact your school for them to submit this. And you will need these for the past three years. So for me, that was sixth, seventh, and eighth. Number six, the parent statement. A mini essay that your parents write, and they give you information about you that maybe you do not include in your application. So the admissions officer might refer to your parent statement. Number seven, the interview. I'm not sure about this year with COVID, but most schools needed for you to have a in-person interview where you go on campus and you get a tour and after the tour you get an interview. And last year, some schools, they had, for example, Zoom interviews or Skype interviews, but it was recommended for you to go in person. The reason for that is just because they want you to get a feeling of the campus and get to know where you might end up going before you fully commit to the school. And also they want to see you in person. They want to have an actual conversation with you. So don't think of it as a Q&A. Just think of it as a conversation with an adult. Number eight, financial aid application. So a common myth that goes around with boarding school is that boarding school is for the rich kids. And 
while there are going to be many well-off students there, over 50% of the students receive financial aid of some sort, whether that means 20K, 40K, or 60K, which is the full boarding scholarship at Andover. So don't feel obligated. And in some cases, it's not going to affect your chances of getting into the school. And I will talk about that later. So I have a side note over here, and it says, except for interview, everything is submitted into a common platform. This might need some explanation, but basically you don't submit everything into the school's website. The school's website is used just for information and information only. It's not for applications, but they do have information about admissions, obviously. A common platform that most schools in New England they use is Gateway, and I have a picture over here. This is what I use. You just sign in, you get an account. It's linked with the schools you're applying to and you submit all the forms into that. Here are some tips. The most important tip that I thought of was be yourself. You know, as cliche as it sounds, don't lie about yourself. Don't be over realistic or under realistic. You know, don't make your application not your application. Because admissions officers, they will see right through it if you're lying. And don't make yourself a person you aren't. It's best to be yourself because the admissions officer would know how well you're going to fit into the school. And if you're not that person, you don't want to just fake an identity for the next four years of high school. Another one is have an activity or interest that you're focused on. An activity or extracurricular that shows devotion and hard work. When many people think of this, they think of, oh, I need to get an award or recognition. And that's not true. Schools, they just look for devotion and hard work and something that you've worked on and focused on for the past, for example, your whole middle school career. That does not mean that you have to be particularly good at this you know, activity, but you have to show that you have a passion for it and that you're willing to continue it at Andover. Next, don't fret too much over your test scores. Um, many people think that test scores are the only thing that admissions officers look at when they're uh, when you're applying, and that is so not true. Because why would there be so many factors to the application if they only looked at your test score? Um, while your test score will probably be the first thing that admissions officers will look at, and they might actually deny your application if they do not like your test score, your test score does not define who you are. Even if you have a slightly average test score, it does not mean that you have no chance of getting into the school. And the same goes with academics. Not everyone who gets all A's will get into schools. Some people will get B's, but they might be amazing at something else, not academics. And schools really want that because then it brings some talent and extracurricular that nobody else has. Of course, the better test score, the better, but do not fret over it. The person you're on the inside matters most. Being a nice person will always surpass any test score, will always surpass any A, always surpass any recognition, any award. And most schools, their motto, it's not going to be, oh my gosh, I want to be the most academically intelligent person on earth. That's not true. Most of them, for example, Andover, um, non civvy not for self, they care about you being a wonderful citizen and a nice person a lot more than you bringing school's perfect SAT, ACD scores. So always know that showing your good morals is so much more important than showing how amazing you are when it comes to scores. Most schools have a need blind admission and this was actually what I wanted to talk about the financial aid part that I talked about um, before. Need blind admission means that schools will admit you based on merit and not financial status. They won't be like I see that you need financial aid. Oh well I can't give you financial aid so you can't come to our school. Most schools they don't do that because they really do care about the student and their talent and what they can bring for the school more than how much money they can give to the school. So keep that in mind when you want to apply for financial aid because that definitely does not lower the chances of you getting into the school. 
So last section, these are just some sources to use. All of these websites I will link in the description box below, um, but these are just three websites that I found amazing to use because they really did help me when I was preparing for example, my interview, but also in general. So number one, Common Sense School's official website. This is going to be your primary source um, because there's going to be no false information because it's the school and their own website. So spend the most time researching about their website, their curriculum, for example, and know about the school a little bit before you go, for example, for your interview. Um, College Confidential, if you're not familiar with this, most of the time this is used for colleges, but there is a huge thread and huge section for applying to boarding schools. I have an example over here. And basically, this is very useful for um, applicants who are thinking about applying next year. The applicants who have already gone through the process, they will share their experience with everybody. So this will be probably the second best website for you to use. This helped me so much because I got to read about other people and, you know, their strengths and how they did their results. And I hope that this will help you too. Number three, niche. This is just for ranking and if you want to know what schools you want to apply to based on ranking, this would be a nice, reliable source to use. That is the end of this presentation and thank you so much for being here with me today. Hopefully you can subscribe and like and, you know, tell me what to film next time.